up guys? Welcome back to this week's uh, episode of Flat Tying Friday. Um, today we're going to be doing some worms. Um, my favorite worm patterns. Uh, we have just like kind of like the classic leather worm right there. Then we're going we're gonna to be doing like a squirmy worm material here. And these are just the materials. I'm going to tie through the flies real quick. And then I have a uh, larva lace worm that I tie as well that is absolutely deadly. So let's just get started real quick. So first off we're going to start with this uh, with this leather worm. Okay, so this is just like a worm style hook. I actually don't know the uh, name on it, and the bag of it that I have is kind of like an off-brand bag, so I can't even tell you what it is. But this flies super, super simple. Um, all you're gonna do is you're gonna lay down a little bit of a thread base. Okay, we'll pop that. And then basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna tie it to the back. Okay. And then once I have that base down, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some, uh, this is a brassy size of a red wire. Um, and typically you tie it in larger than brassy, like even medium to large, because it just makes the amount of wraps that you have to do less, which is convenient. And this is inconvenient. But I'll just tie this in right here in the middle. Okay, we're going to tie this back there. Okay. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to add in this um, leather. And this is actually a pre-cut leather strip that Snake River Fly has. Let me grab a little box. Super convenient. Comes in a pack. It's pretty obscene. It's called their Bull Whip Leather Strips. Um, but they work perfectly and cut back on the amount of time that it takes to really get going on this, right? So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to advance my thread up to the front. Okay, so we got that. We'll do a couple wraps up, and you want these to be touching, nice and tight. And I typically like to do just like four wraps, and what I'll do, I'll add my bull whip, and I, basically you want this to be pretty centered, right? So um, basically what I'll do is I'll center that, I'll add my wrap. And you want that to be pretty tight, right? So it'll be nice and tight like that. And I'll continue my my wraps forward. And like I said, I like to do about four or five wraps in between each tie down point on the worm itself. So I got that, and I'll fold this over again. Nice tight wrap. And I'm really pulling on that because I don't want any issues with this thing coming out or coming undone. And you can tie all these worms with uh, with a bead if you want to. I personally don't ever really add beads to my worms because if I'm fishing them, I, most of the time I'll be running split shot. Um, especially if I'm fishing them deep. But a lot of times they're super deadly drifting through like some shallow riffles. Because a lot of times in the summertime fish will be kind of hanging out in those riffles. Um, and these are just super deadly that time of year as well. But... Tying these worms specifically because it is worm season in the spring. And basically, the reason that is, one, the water's off-colored. But two, um, the biggest thing is a lot of these worms are living in that living in that mud. Basically just right up, or right up from the main water line, right? So when the water line bumps up... Um, when that water line bumps up, all these worms just get kind of tossed into the mix. And what trout is going to deny this delectable worm? Not a smart one. Okay, so then basically, once you have that whole thing kind of tied in like that, you're going to add some thread wraps above and below your wire just to kind of seal the deal. Make sure it's nice. And connect it in like that, just like that. Okay. And then you're gonna helicopter that, it'll break right off. And that's basically that worm as a whole. Uh, I usually wrap back a little bit to give myself some space for my whip finish. And then I'll just whip finish. Tie that in, and I like to add a couple of these just for safe measure. Okay. Boom. I'll just break that. Okay, so there's your first worm. Just a total classic leather worm. 
Kind of like a San Juan, but not chenille. It's just this leather moves really yummy in the water. Okay, so that's the first pattern. Second one, we'll do this quick little larva lace fly. All right, so this is a 200R umqua hook. Long shank. Um, gives you plenty of room to tie on. These are good for stone flies and stuff like that too. Um, this fly again, super, super simple. Um, and when you're tying it, <clears throat> excuse me, very, very easy fly. And you're going to see here that these flies are all extremely simple. Um, and for this pattern, I actually kind of like to have, have it kind of thick. So what I do is I add a thread base, and then right at the head of it um, is where I tie in my larva lace. And so this right here, this is vinyl rib, pardon me. Um, so that's that right there. And this is the uh, nymph size. So I'll take a pretty liberal portion of this. Okay, and then I'll t cut that. And what I do is I'll tie this in. Okay, I'll tie that in nice and tight up there. Pull this back, and you want to pull it pretty tight because that way it'll actually create, it'll thin out while you're tying it in, unless you want it really bulky, but I mean, I know I just said I like it bulky, but um, not too bulky. So then this trick right here is something that I actually learned from my buddy Kurt Vest, who does a lot of fly tying, um, has a couple flies in with rainies. And basically, what I'll do is I'm going to add this flash underneath all of this and then I'm just going to loosely wrap a little bit of this flash up through this when I say loosely I mean like pretty freaking loose if, as you can see it's not really staying because of how loose it is so what this will actually do is when I tie up my vinyl this will actually show through um, through that vinyl and you'll actually be able to see it and it'll add a tiny bit of flash and some contrast that you normally wouldn't be able to see and this is just uh, Mirage tinsel in opal. Um, so basically, so I got that. And then it's important to note that this vinyl ribbing, um, there's a flat side and then there's a rounded side. So you're going to kind of want to find the rounded side because you want that side sticking out. And that's my rounded side right there. So basically, I'm going to take that and then I'm going to do touching wraps all the way up the worm. Okay. And I don't know if you can see that quite as well as I can, but there is some very evident lighter um, flash and tinsel underneath that that creates a nice little contrast into the body. And I personally don't like my worms being um, super bright in color, especially because if you see most worms, like I like to stick to natural stuff. And I know this squirmy worm is going to break that rule that I just made, but... Um, I like to stick to like some darker reds, wines, browns, um, and so basically, so there's that. We'll whip finish that off, and that's that in uh, red. You can tie it in purple, you can tie it in brown, pink, you name it. You can tie it whatever color you want, um, but that's that pattern right there. Pretty, pretty simple. So we'll pop that off, and I'll grab set this right here. And then, last but not least, we have the squirmy worm. This material is an absolute bear to handle. Uh, it's such a pain in the butt. Um, but this is the easiest way that I found to tie it in. And with these ones, you want them pretty long. So as you can see, this is going to be tied on a relatively small hook. But that's a good bit of worm right there. Um, and this is just on a Umqua 2457. I'm not in any way sponsored by Umqua. It's just the hooks that I always tie or have laying around. So this one is going to be kind of disgustingly simple for how effective it is. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to add a thread base. Okay. So we got our thread base there. If I can get this thread off my finger. Okay. So we're going to wrap that back a little bit. And worms are incredibly dirty, but they're incredibly effective. So basically that's my bare hook, right? And all that I usually do personally is I will take this squirmy worm material, and this stuff will wrap around and be a total pain in the butt to deal with. So the way that's why you add that thread base in. And basically, all that I do is I will do this, and I will just tie it in 
right on top and I don't tighten it too hard until after so basically there's that right there and then I'll move my thread and then I'll really cinch down right there and this doesn't have to be on top of the hook it doesn't have to be anything you, those little legs just need to be able to move around the water and honestly it looks more like a wacky rig for bass fishing than anything else but that right there is the squirmy worm um, and you can tie it in whatever ways you want uh, a lot of guys will literally not even add thread, they'll just throw a bead, like run this through the bead and put the bead on the hook and the bead won't come off, it won't go past the barb and so the worm will just be stuck there if they're really trying to crank through them, but that doesn't take too long at all to do. Um, so yeah, there's both of those three worm patterns and as I was saying, uh, this pattern is especially effective in spring with dirty water and, um, and high water because that high water is going to be brushing all these worms out of the mud on just on the out side layer of mud on the river um but yeah so those are the uh th my three favorite worm patterns and really the only three worm patterns that i ever fish anywhere these guys are right here just like that um but yeah so thanks for watching this week and uh like and subscribe make sure you share this video to all your uh, worm hating friends but you'll be catching way more fish than they will on the river fishing these patterns so thanks for watching mm -hmm.